Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through the conditions of deadlock. So whenever, what are the, or what are the reasons or how a deadlock occurs. So if there is a problem of mutual exclusion, that is nothing but only one process can access the data at one moment of time. So if only one, then it takes really long time for n number of processes to access that single place, right? So it is an it is the reason for deadlock. And there are almost four reasons in total, guys. And the second reason is hold and wait. So hold and wait, we can say it is holding a resource and waiting for some other resource which causes deadlock. A process holding a resource and waiting for another resource which causes deadlock. Fine. And non preemption, no preemption or non preemption. So no preemption, we have discussed this thing, non preemptive or non preemption. So preemption is nothing but non preemption means non stop. So it is not going to stop at any moment. So this may cause deadlock. Yes, that's true. A resource cannot be taken from a process until the process releases the resource. So if it is not willing to resource release, then how can we access and complete our process? So that also leads to deadlock. Fine. And next is circular queue. Circular queue. A set of processes waiting for each other in a circular form. Okay, so basically process P1 needs R1. R1 is allocated to P2 and P2 needs R2 where R2 is allocated to P1. This is a circular, right? So P1 is waiting for P2 and let us assume P2 is waiting for P3 like that. There is a chain and the last one is depending on the first one. Hence we formed a circular loop. So this is nothing but the circular weight. So I hope everyone got a small idea on the causes or the reasons for deadlock. So in the next tutorial, we will be going through how we can handle these deadlocks or how we can remove these deadlocks. So let us meet in the next tutorial. Thank you. Thanks for watching.